The desert city of Dubai flooded by unprecedented rainfall. You mean again? What do you mean again? This is a desert city and a desert city. Surely it has really low rainfall. I mean, the UAE is a pretty dry country. It's a desert after all. Yes, it is a desert city in a desert country. However, it is no stranger to rain. But, please, do go on. I'm confused, Fergus. The way this has been reported, it seems like it's a one-off and, you know, completely unexpected. Well, if we go back in time, it's not completely unexpected, but you know what? Please do go on. Well, thanks, Fergus, for that. Um, you've completely destroyed my illusions. Uh, audience, allow me to introduce Fergus McPike, our resident scientist. The name's Fergus. Well, actually, Ferguson Aloysius McPike to you. Yes, I'm here in a consultative role to keep these two in line. However, I do have an extensive list of qualifications, as you can see. I don't practice much because, well, I'm pretty damn good. Now, let's have a look at what's actually going on in the world. And as reported by, by our favourites, the BBC, Dubai Airport chaos as the UAE and Oman reel from deadly storms. Yeah, deadly storms because people have died. And that's... That's unfortunate. So this was written the other day. Heavy rain has continued to batter Gulf states as deadly flash floods and disrupting flights at the world's second busiest airport. Second only to Atlanta in Georgia. The further north, a man died when his car was caught in a flash flood. And an Oman rescuers found the body of a girl in Saham, bringing the death toll in the country to 19 since Sunday. Quite bad. On Wednesday, about 300 flights to and from Dubai International Airport, a major hub for connecting flights, were disrupted. In fact, uh, the article then goes on to talk about people that are stuck in the airport living on duty-free and fast food. Doesn't sound that bad. <laughs> but anyway, moving on. The BBC have, have brought up the delicate subject of cloud seeding. Now, cloud seeding is, a, is something that the UAE does have as a programme. Um, they've, they've been quite partial to it in the past and they've done quite a bit of it. But they're saying they weren't doing any cloud seeding at this point. The National Meteorology Centre, which is responsible in the UAE for cloud seeding, um, said they didn't do any cloud seeding on the run-up to this. Although they had launched planes and they flew the established programme as the uh, clouds were approaching, they didn't actually seed any clouds, so there was no actual seeding done. Interesting. If I may interject, cloud seeding is the process whereby crystals, sometimes salt, sometimes other metals like aluminium and whatever, are dispersed by usually rockets from aircraft into nascent clouds, causing the water vapour to coalesce around these microparticles and then fall to the ground as rain. You're welcome. The country averages 140 to 200 millimetres of rainfall per year. Dubai got hit by a fairly substantial amount of rainfall, but it wasn't quite as high as is being reported because the mainstream media appear to be reporting 252 millimetres of rainfall in eight hours. And that's not the case. That was in one part of the region near Oman. That wasn't in Dubai. Dubai itself... Only, well, I say only, but it got 5.6 inches of rainfall, which is, what, 100 and, I don't know, 100, 110 centimetres, something like, uh, millimetres, 110 millimetres, something around that. Maybe Fergus will correct me. Oh, completely off the top of my head, 140 millimetres is the figure you're looking for, dear boy. Please, do go on. What did cause this flood then? Well, it was a storm. And um, Reuters have been quite definite, it was not cloud seeding that caused this, it was a regular storm, and we're thinking that maybe the huge rainfall was instead likely due to climate change. So it's a normal weather system that's been exacerbated by climate change, experts say. Okay, so we had a low pressure system in the upper atmosphere, coupled with low pressure at the surface, and it acted like a pressure squeeze on the air causing all the moisture to be squeezed out and dumped on the UAE and Oman. Well, okay, this is still an unprecedented storm and an extraordinary amount of, of water to have fallen on what is a desert country, isn't it? Well, maybe not. And Fergus was right when he said, I normally am. But, 
please do go on. When he said again, because this kind of much pretty happens every year. What? Every year? No. Kind of does. Well, let's have a look at Sky News. So they've gone for what is cloud seeding and did it cause record rainfall in Dubai? A good question. Did it indeed? Huge downpours caused widespread disruption. It's been attributed to a process that encourages rainfall. Let's take a look at what experts have said. I never like it when they don't name the experts. You know, if an expert's saying something, tell us who's saying it. Because he's an expert. I mean, I've, I've already explained, or we've had our resident scientist, Fergus McPike, on as our expert, and we've named him. The name's Fergus. Well, actually, Ferguson Aloysius McPike to you. So a record amount of rainfall was said to have caused absolute carnage in Dubai on Tuesday. Yep, okay, we know that. So more than 14 cent well, that's 140 millimetres. So I may have been wrong. He's right. So 5.6 inches of rain soaked into the UAE city. So 5.6 inches of rain in Dubai. Now that's obviously still got to be extraordinary, hasn't it? Well, maybe, maybe, because if we look at this study, the UAE has been receiving more rainfall over the past two, two decades. Heavy rain that results in flash flooding in the UAE has become longer lasting over the past two decades, a study by local researchers has found. While the risk of flooding is ever present during such wet styles, because you have to remember, desert country, no drainage, no dr I mean, why, why will you need drainage? It doesn't rain much. You know, 90 to 140 millimetres a year. Well, if you get a flash flood, that's when you need drainage. And that's why deserts are prone to flash flooding. Because they don't get a lot of water. So when they do get a lot of water, the ground can't absorb it quick enough. And you have a flash flood. Simples. He's right. Particular wind patterns and moisture coming from the Arabian Sea, Arabian Gulf and the Red Sea have caused more rain than one would normally expect in that area. And here's here's a fine point. 2016, 240 millimetres of rain fell in, in Dubai in one day. And winds of nearly 80 mile an hour. That is double the amount of rain almost that fell the other day. So Dubai is no stranger to flooding. And when we again look through the different time period, we see flooding in Dubai in 2019, 2017, 2020. This time of the year, Dubai sometimes floods because it gets rain. These things happen. Even rains in Nevada. Because lucky me, I went to Vegas for a holiday many years ago and it rained nearly all the time in Nevada. UAE government have said they definitely were not cloud seeding before the Dubai floods, they are not. They are saying they are not responsible. The National Center of Meteorology, government task force responsible for cloud seeding missions in the United Arab Emirates, said it had not carried out any weather modification technique. Now it does do this. It's not saying it doesn't do it. What it's saying is it does not do it this week before the flooding started. And as they pointed out here, the country experienced an extremely heavy downpour with more than 250 millimetres in the Emirate of Alain, not Dubai. Not Dubai. Alain. Alan? Alan! 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 Al! Alan! <laughs> the average rainfall in the UAE averages between 140 to 200. 140 to 200. Maybe slightly higher than I'd quoted earlier. I'm sure Fergus will be on my back again. He's right. National Weather Service said it had tracked the incoming heavy rain but did not target any clouds during the period attributing the storm to natural rainfall. These things happen. Natural rainfall. Not cloud seeded. Now, Wild um, published an article in January asking if the UAE's cloud seeding had gone too far. Has it? Has the cloud seeding gone too far? Have, have they encouraged more rainfall when, you know, there shouldn't be that amount of rainfall? And again, if they've had prior rainfall before this, that would reduce the water carrying capacity of the ground. And as we've already discussed, we have no dra no real drainage in a place like Dubai because you, you don't get a lot of rain, so you don't need big drains. So as it goes on in a wild article, high in the skies above the Gulf State, aircraft have been conducting flybys of clouds and releasing salt into them with the use of flares. The aim, 
to increase precipitation. So UAE has been doing this. They've been doing it for quite a while. And this is this happens all over the place. It happened in China um, during the Olympics because they wanted to knock the rain out of the sky before the Olympics started and before certain events were conducted. So they did. They used quite a lot of cloud seeding to try and you know dampen down the the amount of rain that that falls. And remember, China gets a fair bit of rain. You don't get that green without having a fair bit of rain. In the face of a worsening water shortage crisis, the UAE has turned itself into something of a pioneer in the Middle East when it comes to the science dubbed as rainmaking. As of mid-November. It had conducted 185 cloud seeding operations since the beginning of 2019. Now, I believe this article was released in 2019. They don't say that, but I think it was released in 2019. It was released in 2019. You're quite correct, John. So they've been doing this for a number of years. And the National Weather Service saying the activity increases rainfall by an average of 10 to 15%, and in certain conditions, as much as 30%. So it's possible that in a country where fresh water is in short supply, cloud seeding could actually be causing too much rain to fall. Because if you're taking the rain out of the weather system in one place where it doesn't normally fall, something else is going to be affected, aren't they? And then the article goes on to say, these clouds usually contain a lot of water and can cause floods. We are concerned about seeding clouds that could cause flooding. We're using very sophisticated radars that cover all of the UAE's atmosphere and are monitoring every droplet. Every droplet? That's maybe a stretch. Maybe a teeny bit of a stretch there. I have to concur, John. I'm pretty positive that radar technology is not yet at the stage of being able to monitor every droplet of water. Please, do go on. The big rider is, it is hard to be certain of anything when it comes to cloud seeding. Indeed. So the article does go on, though, and, and it, it then starts to contradict itself a little bit. You know, science isn't an, science isn't exact. Science is never exact. The science is never settled because you're always looking for ways of disproving scientific theories because you can't ever prove a scientific theory. It's always disproved. And and in this occasion, they go on to say we haven't been able to show that you can produce enough precipitation through cloud seeding that it makes a real impact. You can increase the amount of snow over a mountain range, 5-10% to 10 over a season, and we're working to be able to say something as definitive as that, but as a scientist, I think we haven't reached that point yet. And I would, I would concur with that, because, more importantly, John, I would concur with that. When you're dealing with a chaotic system, like the weather, you're really struggling to pin anything down, because... It is such a chaotic system. That article saying there's a lack of actual evidence that cloud seeding works. Therefore, all the people on social media that are jumping on saying cloud seeding, they've done that, and it rained too much, could it just be a wet season? Could it? 